Hello, everyone. I missed my cue because Ian's a jerk. Um, hi, wow. welcome, welcome to local chat. Ian's here. David's here. Hi. It's just an Hello. episode, you know. It's episode thirty-eight, which is kind of crazy. Um, lots going on in the news. Can't wait to get there. Not much going on, at least for uh, Ian and I, as far as uh, the playing of video games. But we will get there soon enough. First, we've got to talk about what we've been playing, which is right now. Uh, I don't want to jump into it yet. Guys, what, what is there to talk about? There's things to talk about. I'll go first. I'll go first. You go first. Or do you want to talk about games? Uh, do you want to talk about... We can talk about whatever. I. You know what? I haven't been playing a lot of games yet because um, in case you haven't been paying attention, I'm a new homeowner and um, it turns out lots of projects to do and it's actually kind of awesome, but it takes up a lot of time. My latest project, guys, I feel like I, I have a successful backup career now, which is being an electrician because it turns out not that hard. Look, I don't mean to downplay <laughs> being an electrician, <laughs> but sorry, I feel like in two low. weeks. In two weeks, Will's gonna get a message from uh, Maggie. Is that right? Yeah, <laughs> he's gonna get a message from Maggie that's like, "Ian is dead. The funeral is next week." And we'll be like, that "What happened?" And it'll be like, "Well, Ian was doing electrician stuff. He thought he was good yeah. at it, and now he is dead." <laughs> I like. I was so. Par I I just finished it up a couple hours ago. Basically, um, we have a two car garage and. I um I wanted to paint the walls because it was like this like awful cream color that's been there for like 25 years now. It's all these dents and things and like scrape marks on it and stuff. So I was painting it, and in the process of painting it, I realized my garage only has one outlet with two plugs on it. And I was like, that's awful. Like that's <laughs> great if all you do is park your car in your garage, but somebody like me who's gonna be like building furniture and welding and fixing cars and doing stuff out there, I need more than that. And then I was like. Like it just, you know, tie in some outlets. And long story short, I realized what I had to do was I had to collapse some of the breakers in my fuse panel, add a whole new breaker, run a whole new two branch circuit and add like 14 outlets throughout the garage. <laughs> and so that's the project I've been doing for the last week. And I just finished it up with like the most nerve wracking part because basically for safety's sake, you you build the entire circuit first. And then the last thing you do is you tie it into the, the panel. Because that way, when you're working on the circuit, you're tying in the, you're doing the wires to the outlets and all that stuff. It's not live. Um, but the thing about a fuse box is um, it has a big breaker at the top of it that turns off the power to your house. But you can't legally turn off the power from the street. <laughs> so there's basically just like two big wires at the top of your fuse box that are just like, do not touch these. Do not touch those <laughs> lug nuts. You will die. And it's just like, you're working within inches of it. And like, I even bought like, like insulated gloves and like the screwdrivers that are like semi-metallic and they have like an insulated sleeve on them. So if I slipped and like crossed the contacts or something, so it was nerve wracking, but long story short, um, electrical work, kind of fun. It's it's still manual, but not as manual as, as like being a carpenter, et cetera. And it's it's kind of enjoyable. And like being able to turn it on at the end and be like, works, 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 works. It's just, it feels real good. So long story short, no video games for me, just home ownership. Uh, I did play a little bit of Minecraft, though. Um, I love Minecraft. Will, you love Minecraft, right? I, I've yet to play it. Uh, it's on my list. <laughs> David, I know you love Minecraft. Uh, I wouldn't go so far to say love, but I do like Minecraft, yeah. I do love Minecraft as well. Yeah. I, my nephew um is uh he lives in Florida. I'm so I'm getting to spend a lot more time with him now that I've been down here. Um he's kind of like a drug dealer. He keeps like really pushing <laughs> me to play Minecraft with him. And I I keep having to say no, maybe just a little bit, maybe just a taste because I know that if I if I if I play too much Minecraft, I'm just going to be playing Minecraft for like months on it. Um, so I've been playing it a little bit with him. I just started up a Java server. It's actually crazy because he was coming over and bringing his iPad. And then he was like booting up the Xbox and then just being like, hey, come play Minecraft. And I would sit on the couch and play it on the Xbox. And he would play it on his iPad. And because it's the Bedrock Edition, it's cross play. So we're just playing mm -hmm. together. And it's it's just really cool to see how Minecraft has evolved to become this like cross-platform ecosystem that has just 
dropped so many barriers to letting people just play Minecraft and play it together. Um, and it's just crazy. How, how do you like Minecraft with a controller? It's not as bad as I thought it would be, honestly. Yeah. It's a little wonky, but but it's not terrible. Still it's, prefer mouse and keyboard. Yeah, it's it's the same way I thought about I thought about it a lot when I was playing Dragon Quest Builders 2 and you had mentioned how is that without yeah. or how is that with a controller? And it's about the same thing where that game I could get away with it because while that game is a lot about building it's got more to it than that versus yes. I think Minecraft. I don't think I could do it with a controller. But you're forgetting Minecraft is first person. So it's really that's not that true. Bad with a controller. I have it um, on like the third switch, person, but third person Dragon Quest yeah. builders building with that. I could not handle it. I, I guess just that. like if I was home, I would have to play on the computer. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Um, if, yeah. The other game that I've been playing I don't want to talk about it until both of yous kind of dig into it a little bit more, which is I mean, I definitely... like you should just start and then we'll we'll build off of what you say. OK, look, I played <laughs> two point eight hours of Deathloop and I am strongly considering refunding it on Steam. It has not grabbed well, it's me too late <laughs> at all. I, isn't it? Isn't it a four hour? Two, two. buddy. I could probably try anyways, but it's, it's literally just like <laughs> like I never refund games on Steam, but I was so excited for this game. And it has just it has just done absolutely nothing to grab me. Like there are kind of story elements that are grabbing me, but the gameplay is not is not very good. They're they are I don't want to say they're hand holding you, but they are throwing so many mechanics on you and so many text boxes at you at the start that it's just like, let me play the game and discover this all myself. And the the AI is so stupid brain dead that I've just completely given up stealth. It's like go in an area, the area is not exciting. I kill everybody immediately as soon as I see them, and I just grab whatever MacGuffin they want for that quest line that I'm currently on. And I just have zero drive to play this game. And I keep seeing 10 out of 10 reviews and people saying it's game of the year. And I'm like, how? This just feels like my crusade against AAA games where they just take unique game ideas and they just go, let's just put so much polish on top of it, so many unnecessary mechanics and explanations that it just becomes uninteresting. Am I crazy? I don't like Deathloop. Am I crazy? I don't think you're crazy. I think I, I, I listen. I before this podcast, I literally almost printed out a piece of paper that said, "Surprise, Ian doesn't like Deathloop," because I thought it would be a funny <laughs> gag. But the then crazy I thing didn't is, do it. But the crazy thing is, before Deathloop came out, I feel like out of everybody on this podcast, I was the most excited. For yes, it because the trailers made it look like an amazing, huge Hitman level type thing, and, and, and yeah. I'm not saying it's not that, but they took all these ideas and they just ruin them in their implementation i don't think you're to that point yet i will say as someone who has beaten death loop and enjoyed death loop it's not like 10 out of 10 for me it's like probably an eight for me but like the first two-ish hours are mm -hmm. really slow yeah. uh it's it is a crawl and then the game once you are finally done with the tutorials which does take forever the tutorialization yeah. is way too long for the beginning of that game once you're through that and the game opens up and you can start to experiment and really look at things uh that's when it really started to, to click with me because i i was with you and i did well not to your degree i i enjoyed the first two hours but i was very much like man this is getting tens uh yeah yeah i don't see that yet and then after those two hours once i was starting to explore the world on my own and just try things and really taking out a few visionaries and getting powers that's when the game started to open up for me yeah okay and i will say after you i think you mentioned last week of you just gunning down people and i was like oh yeah i should just do that but i also <laughs> remembered I, I can't remember if this is in the tutorial someone told me it was but i don't remember it the longer you're alive the harder the game gets um, to the point that people see you faster or have more health or do more damage to you like regular npcs so like sometimes when i'm sense. in the afternoon or evening after a couple days like i like i'll have four or five people just run into a room and immediately kill me because i can't get out like it's that fast yeah. I, and i've had runs that end um just because they're like i'm trying to get away from people and they're just killing me like there's a lot of that where you and i feel like they do that to like an early game you can kill a lot of people and then they trick you into like being overconfident yeah. and just getting 
mauled down. Um, and I feel like there's scenarios where there's a ton of scenarios where you can just run in guns blazing. It's not a big deal. Don't have fun, blow people away. And then there are other scenarios. One comes to mind where your reprisal ability gets disabled, where you do not want to do that. Because <laughs> if you get yeah. gunned down, that's the end of your loop. You restart and you lose everything that you picked up. Yeah. Uh, so like there, there are places like that. There are... Have you done the party yet, Ian? Probably not. I saw the party. I haven't gotten into it. I, I just yeah. got the infusion ability and then I stopped playing. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So you basically just finished the tutorial. Yeah. Give it a little longer because I feel like you are at the point where it will start to open up. I don't think you're going to think it's a 10 at this point. That's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. But I feel like if you give it a little longer, it might get to the point where you're like legitimately having a lot of fun because there are lots of ways to do things. And I was just talking with, um, I think it was Chris and Zach on, on the Save Data Discord about an option for one of the visionaries that I straight up just never saw and never ran into. And I was like, oh, you know what? I had this piece of information. Didn't know what to do <laughs> with it. But now that... <laughs> Now that you're talking about it, I'm like, oh, that's if I go there at like a different time or do something yeah. a little differently, then this thing's activated. So I feel like there's going to be a lot of stuff like that coming up. And I really want to do, may have one of you guys, Will, if you're done with the game, have you you over too for doing a spoiler cast of Deathloop to talk oh, totally. about those different routes people took because people have been taught. And there are things I saw in the game that I couldn't figure out how to use them and i'm really curious if other people figured out how to use them yeah. so well it's like um brad shoemaker at next lander was talking about he had a visionary that he could get he could load the level and exit the level inside of four minutes and kill the visionary and get everything and i was like trying to figure out which visionary it was <laughs> I can think of one or two yeah. that that's probably doable with and then on the flip side the the there's a couple times when it deactivates your your ability to have multiple lives and i did one of those levels and i killed the guy i managed to kill uh actually this is funny juliana invaded and immediately died and i was like what and i like looked everywhere for the body it's because throughout the entire complex i was activating i was hacking and activating oh. turrets just all the way oh, up for, for fun and yeah. she spawned and died by the turret immediately <laughs> and i was like oh that's weird so i finally found her body but anyways so that whole thing i had all this stuff and i was like oh i've got three lives and i was like let me just fight all these people oh. and they killed me and i immediately went to that loading screen of dying and i was like what and then I remember what I was doing, and I was like, I, I, so I never went back to that level and killed that visionary again because I was just like, I just never went because it was and towards the end of my me, run. I found how to disable that system, like disable the thing that disables your respawns. Oh. So I went in and turned that off later runs doing that. So I was just yeah. like, oh, I'll turn this off, run in, merc this dude, and leave. Yeah. <laughs> But that system you can use in a different level. So I was trying to leave the level with it and not thinking about it. I was like, oh, let me just rush out of the level. I have three lives. And yep. yeah. So it, you know, I, I think you'll definitely, I mean, I would try for the refund if you can get it. If you can't get it, I, then commit. Yeah. Uh, you should That's do a, a live strategy. refund request right now. Uh, <laughs> and then if it doesn't work. Like like to be clear i never i think i was steam refunded once like four or five years ago and, and like i never really do it but i'm literally just sitting here going i spent 60 yeah. bucks on this i could use that money on home projects I, there's even other games coming out like battlefield yeah. 2042 and i'm just yeah. like i am literally just not getting any entertainment out of this the, so I, i'll try the refund and if i don't then i'll play the game okay more. yeah so the one time i did a steam refund i bought anno 1800 i think which is an excellent fantastic game loaded it up played the tutorial i was like i'm really gonna like this game but i do not have time for it so i just <laughs> i uninstalled <laughs> it and refunded it and they were like yep. sure and i was like thank you so they're like what was wrong with it and i'm like other it was too good <laughs> <laughs> it was too good and i will have an addiction problem. <laughs> yeah i was like i cannot play this game right now um that's yeah so I, I beat death loop uh tuesday night um right before we streamed uh and uh yeah i i gotta check my hour count i don't know how long i have in it i i've 
I'm in that weird phase where I'm like, I could go back to it and look out some of the mysteries, or I could go on YouTube and Google it. Um, mm -hmm. Honestly, if yeah, it there, was an there Xbox... There are certain things that I might try out, but I'd rather talk to people and see what they did. Yeah, if it was like, an Xbox I honestly game... honestly think that's more fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if it was an Xbox game, I'd probably go back and try to get more achievements, but it's a PlayStation game, and I, I don't care about trophies because um, I'm not a weirdo. Um, so I'm not going to do that. come back into our oh, conversation oh, come on, a little you, bit. <laughs> you, care about, you care about achievements. I know, that's the joke. Um, I'm almost at 100,000. Ironically... I'm the opposite. I care about trophies and don't care about Steam or Xbox. Uh, I, Steam, no way. Steam's stupid. Um, yeah. Xbox, I think, only because I was an Xbox person for so long. <laughs> and then, like, trophies are fine. I just, I don't get the same adrenaline rush as when I get a, an achievement. Um, well, okay, that's dumb. They're the same thing. But yeah, I just picked my thing. one platform because I'm like, I can't do this for all of the <laughs> listen we're the opposite sides of the same coin uh <laughs> other than death loop i've just been playing more rim world uh i'm still going through uh the um my colony uh on vanilla ideology and royalty uh it's pretty fun i've there are so many more cool missions with uh royalty and uh, and ideology i don't know which is added from what um but like you'll have missions where um like there was a uh uh the royalty at a nearby city had a like a mistress but what's the male version of a mistress a mister mister i think mister guess master master anyways so there was a male master and they got into trouble so he needs to hide him they're asking if they can hide him at my colony for 60 for actually 20 days and they'll give me a guard in case anyone uh, tries to show up and take him down. Uh, so, like, I'm doing that. I built, like, a little... He has to be in a prison cell, so I, like, built a little prison cell for him. And then I had someone else who was like, hey, can we borrow three of your colonists for four days? Uh, and then you can have them back, blah, blah, blah. So it's pretty fun, uh, like, checking all that stuff out and kind of working through my design for uh, colonies. I always try to do something different and always end up doing the same thing halfway through and then being like no i have to do something different so uh, <laughs> it's been a lot of fun and I'm, I'm finally not in like an arctic zone so i like don't have to constantly worry about everyone freezing to death oh, that's the nice. game's still good according, um, according to google it commonly the term mister is used for a male mistress however paramore can also apply paramore isn't that a band? Spelled, you're talking about it is, like but them. spelled differently. Gosh. M O U R at the end instead of M O. You're talking about like the passive mistress. I thought you were talking about like the dominant mistress. You know what I mean? I meant like an old like man who eating. bangs a young lady. <laughs> oh, God. and has a wife. <laughs> Isn't that a mistress? Gonna, well, no, no. Then the young lady is the mistress. The, the young, young lady's, lady's the, mistress. the mistress. That's what I mean. I thought you were yeah. talking about like like BDSM. If it's, oh. if it's a dominant woman, it's a mistress. I'm a oh, male no. master. Is that mistress? Yeah, I guess it is. Because it's, <laughs> it's not... Oh, well, I guess they're dominate. Oh, I don't know. Welcome to the BDSM cast, everybody. Let's do some research. Um, come back next week. <laughs> yes, we will do that. Uh, David, would you like to talk about uh, some other games on your list? Yeah, so opposite of you two who have been doing things, uh, I have pretty much only been playing video games for the past good for you honestly uh good that's for you i'm cooking video or cooking and playing video games are my primary cooking <laughs> video heard, games have you heard of cooking mama cook star because it's not good <laughs> it's not good it looks really bad i didn't pick that one up <laughs> books uh, are delicious so i talked about death loop um i'll do some quick ones first uh i played toem so i saw uh Zach had actually uh, from Save Data had played this as like a first impressions thing. It looked cool to me, so I picked it up. It is basically a isometric ish, um, black and white, two D, three D mix game where you're. It's very chill where you're just going around taking pictures of stuff. Ooh, that's nice. the game. So it, it's a cool little photography game and help like basically. The idea is you want to go see this natural phenomenon that's on top of this mountain. And the way your community works is 
you can get bus tickets by helping out the community instead of actually having a currency. So you help out the community to get your bus tickets so that you can get close enough to the mountain so that you can climb it and go see this cool natural phenomenon called Toem. Uh, and really, it was just a very fun, chill, short game that has a lot of like puzzle game slash Pokemon Snap vibes to it. Mm-hmm. Not super long, handful of hours, probably three to three to five is my guess. And I 100 percent of the game, so that you don't even have to do all that. Uh, and overall, I just had a really good time with the game. Art style was good. Characters were fun. Taking pictures was fun. It was super chill. Had a good time with it. Would recommend. Sounds awesome. Uh, and I think I want to say today it's only like it's also only like twenty bucks, which is good too. Uh, and I think it's ten percent off if yes, you buy it today. I, did just, is, I think the last day. I googled uh, it and it was ten percent like off. Yeah, that's only for today or tomorrow. That's ending pretty soon, so not for long. Uh, had a good time with that. Recommend that if you want a chill game. Absolutely great. Got the platinum on PlayStation. It was really easy. Recommend if you if you're gonna do that one. Go for the achievements. Why not? <laughs> uh. And then I also picked up on PS5 uh, Kena Bridge of Spirits, which that is how you say it. It's not Kena. It's not Kena. It's Kena. Kena. <laughs> uh, which I would not have guessed. Apparently, the game is very Japanese inspired, and that's Kena. So it makes sense once you know it's very Japanese, but you would not get that from any of the trailers that they have released, that it's pretty Japanese inspired. Uh, but there's Tori gates all over the place, like Fox shrines, owl shrines. It's, Mm -hmm. it's super Japanese, but it's basically picture a 3d platformer Mm -hmm. with a little bit of combat from like the PS2 era, Uh, except uh... Pixar made it and it's modern. Uh... Oh, yeah that ps2 combat though yeah let me tell you so there's positives and negatives to this game. <laughs> like electricity <laughs> or circle. magnets whatever you want to go with <laughs> <laughs> but the visuals of this game absolutely stunning this is one of the best games i've ever seen and it was made by it was made by an animation studio who has decided to get into games basically uh cool. so makes a ton of sense Building off of that, I really wish they had put some more people in the game design, combat design mm-hmm. sort of realm because I'm having fun with this game. I'm I'm a few hours in. I th- actually I'm probably I'm probably twenty five to thirty percent way through the game. Uh, it's from what I heard, it's like ten to twelve hours ish. Oh. Um, it's good. It's not great. Is is kind of where I'm at on it. Um, it, essentially, it very much feels like a playstation 2 game uh in a lot of good and bad ways yeah. uh it's got some it, it's got really that formula of like hey you do a thing you open a gate you go over there you do a thing you open the next gate rinse and repeat over and over again hmm. um the narrative is very simple you're a spirit guide and you're helping spirits move on that's really hmm. it it's not a whole lot deeper than that uh and my issues come with mostly the combat. A lot of the puzzles and like movement is very Breath of the Wild, Zelda esque. Um, they've got a ton of the same features. So, like, the slowdown with the arrows is in there. Um, I'm a sucker have, for that. Basically, they have the bombs in there from Legend of Zelda. There, there's a ton of, ton of influence that you can see. Um, and a lot of climbing that's closer to like a God of War or like an Uncharted where you've got clear ledges that have a white marking and you climb to them um Mm -hmm. so a lot of stuff is is fine the combat is actually pretty hard uh which i would not expect from this game (laughs) looking at the visual style and like it presents to me as like oh this is gonna be a fun kids game that is also fun for adults is how it looks visually no if you're a kid playing this game you're gonna get dunked on (laughs) absolutely (laughs) dunked on like <laughs> the first few bosses I died like a couple times and I was like, oh man, this is like not not hard, but you know, like moderately challenging. Like I, I don't just beat each boss the first try. And then I hit a, a fucking cliff of difficulty <laughs> with one boss where it's just like <laughs> you trying to dodge. This man tracks your animation like you've never seen in any game before. You try and dodge, he's on you. Uh, it was it was rough. 
And I finally, after like 10 or 15 attempts on this dude, this is how hard this game gets. Like just all of a sudden gets this hard. After like 10 or 15 attempts, I have this guy down to like 10% of his health. I'm winning. He glitches and teleports on top of me and just kills me. And I was like, nope, that's it. I'm turning this into baby mode. I'm lowering the difficulty all the way down, and I'm just playing <laughs> this game. I'm done with that. I can do hard, hard plus glitches. I'm out. No. <laughs> no, thank you. Uh, so I have turned it to baby mode, and I'm having more fun with it now that I can just like yeah. cruise through stuff. Um, it really seems like there, basically there's, I think, three or four areas is what it's going to be. And the mini bosses, not that bad takes one or two tries mm -hmm. one to three or four tries depending on how hard they are which i'm totally good with and then the the main boss at the end of the area is where they like kick you in the face so i might turn the difficulty back up and try the later main bosses and see if it's maybe just this one boss has some weird physics or tracking or something but i don't anticipate that being the thing so beautiful game i'm having fun with it i'm not having that much fun <laughs> with it is where i'm at gotcha and it's only game. it's only 40 oh, bucks it's like, too right? it's 40 bucks yeah it's 40 that's bucks. not bad oh that's interesting for like wasn't expecting that 10 to 12 ish hours yeah so not bad um and the last game i've been playing which i have played a ton of tales of arise this game is good y'all this game okay, is but really is good. It good or is it just anime is it david GRPG good, good? No, no, no. So, like, this is easily top three Tales game for me. Like, I can say that without thinking about it. Easily top so three. So it's anime JRPG good. Gotcha. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> is it better than Second has... 2? No, but I gave that game a 10. <laughs> Listen, uh, well, how am I to Very play false. it then? <laughs> Listen, Tales of Rise is going to be one of the be best JRPGs in the past few years that you can play, period. Um, I think, honestly, the only one that I can think of is that it is better is probably Final Fantasy VII Remake. Persona That's... 5. They're different. Oh! I'm... They're different. This is an action game. Persona 5 is turn-based. Oh, I didn't know Tales of Rise. It's action? So it's not yeah, even... Yeah, the, the entire Tales series is action. It's not Oh, uh, so it's bad. It's not what? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, Tales has always been action. They've they've never done like turn based stuff. But like, combat is smooth. The characters are great. Like the like my only problems with the game are like nitpicky, which is a good sign. So like nitpicky is one of the combat things. Basically, combat's very fluid. It has your enemies have a stagger gauge similar to like. Final Fantasy VII Remake or like a Sekiro or something like that. Uh, they've all got a stagger stagger gauge. My problem with it is like the stagger gauge becomes the only way to beat pretty much every enemy minus one type that I can think of. And every time you deplete their stagger gauge, it basically goes into a mini cutscene. And after 50 hours of playing the game, that does get old. Like I, I will say that part gets yeah. old. Is it only like three seconds of cutscene? Yeah, but it still gets pretty old. Uh, I gotta be honest with you. I'm I'm skipping through a gameplay trailer right now. This game looks pretty good. It looks it's good. really good, dude. Uh, like I I was very nervous about this game because visually and in some of the gameplay, it is a pretty big departure from the Tales series. Mm -hmm. But I feel like most of that has been for the better. Uh, but I was concerned. I didn't pick up this game early i waited for reviews to drop because i was like uh, is this gonna be like an 85 tales game or is this gonna be a 65 tales game because both of those exist <laughs> yeah. and it's like an 89 tales game like it's wow. good Ooh. this is a good oh, yeah. game <laughs> so let me ask you a question is is the tales series is that kind of like final fantasy where you can just each one is independent story-wise and you can just pick it up and play generally yes there are like okay. two exceptions sort of but generally yeah they're they're completely separate from each other okay. uh or the ones that are related are loosely related where if you play an old one and then play the new one it's like oh you pick up on some references but it's not gonna change your your gaming experience like mm -hmm. the ones before uh arise zestiria and berseria 
took place in the same timeline. There were a couple characters that were shared, but you could play them completely separately and they would both gotcha. be fine in their own rights. Uh, but yeah, like the combat in this game, really good. Minus the the boost strike thing, which is what those mini cutscenes are called, getting really old. Uh, and the controls are not great. Uh, you can remap them, but they're, the remapping is not in a sensible location. It's not in the controls section, which was weird. So I missed it till halfway through. Oh. And at that point, I was like, I'm committed. I'm used to this. I'm not changing it now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Dang. Uh, like, combat was really good. I The characters in this game are fantastic. Um Tales has a tradition of having some annoying characters that you grow into, and this game has those, but they're not super annoying compared to some of the old ones. They're like, okay, you know what? I don't like you, but I don't hate you, and then give it a few hours, and you're like, oh, you're a great character, and there is like really strong backstory and reasoning for why you act the way you act, and the characters grow closer together. It's fantastic. Uh, the story starts off very linear and no it doesn't ever really change linear uh it starts off a very like you're at point a here's steps b c d and e and then f is the end and then guess what f is not the end that's halfway <laughs> and a new storyline opens up which i feel like they do a really good job my only other nitpick is honestly like the last literally boss was like kind of meh story-wise but relatively fun to fight so that, that's really my only other criticism of the game and it, it's great it has a really good fishing mini game if that's your thing if you're chris out there and you want to oh play God. a fishing mini game uh Ooh. legitimately fun fishing mini game that i enjoyed what was your um final hour count uh i beat the game i think around 50 hours that's not bad for a jr and then i did all of the post game stuff, like every single bit, and I ended up at around a little over sixty. Well, that's, that's not bad. bad. Yeah. So there's a lot of a lot of post game stuff, which was some of the best post game I've ever played in a JRPG as well. Uh short of like an actual expansion or something. Uh it, it was really solid. They had a bunch of the essentially light spoilers for the post game that has no story implement implications. Um the <laughs> Yeah, cover up your headphones. Uh, the post game has like a ton of references to older Tales games, and they actually recreate some of the maps in the new engine in 3D, even from some Ooh, of the two games. Ooh, I like that. Which is which was very cool and a good throwback. One of them even had a puzzle that I straight up remember because it's from one of the games that I absolutely love. It's like a navigational puzzle, and I'm like, oh, so is this the same as the original? Can I just walk over here and, and I'm I'm in the right area? Yes, you can. It's great. <laughs> Fantastic callbacks. Uh, I yes. I really enjoyed this game. If It's literally my number two for the year, um, other than Psychonauts 2. Like, if, that didn't, if that game did not come out, this would be my game of the year right now. Dang. Maybe I have to check it out. I, it is the year of the JRPG. I don't know if people know that. It is the year of the JRPG. Um, and I only played one this year. I started... Uh, Started Final Fantasy VI, and that was pretty fun. Mm. Uh, but then, you know, life got in the way. Speaking of life, folks, it's time for the news, which means that we got to play the news theme, which means that we've got to play the news theme. We're talking about news. It's gaming news. What's up, news? What's up, news, folks? We've got news this week, and you're going to fill your ears with our news. Uh, first off the bat, Fortnite banned on Apple devices. Ian, how are you coping with your nephew? <laughs> It's, uh, you know, thank God he has not played. Actually, I don't think he's allowed to play games that have guns in them, which is probably a good thing. Ugh. Uh, but, um... How old is your nephew? Eight. Okay. I think. Weeks. Um, but I know, uh, Will, you and I, we are Fortnite champions. It's, it's true. true. There's we, no we evidence of Fortnite. it, but... <laughs> we beat Fortnite the first time we played it. Um, oh, did you guys get a dub your first game, too? Yeah, yes. we took a helicopter and just flew straight up. <laughs> um, but Easy basically, peasy. 
the uh, Epic v. Apple lawsuit ended. Apple technically won, but the judge basically came down with a ruling that said Apple's ecosystem is way too stringent and they should allow third-party purchases via their apps. Um, and uh, essentially, Epic came back and paid the fines, etc., and made changes to their Fortnite app and said, okay, we're ready. Let's go back on the App Store, Apple, just like you promised. And Apple basically said, no. <laughs> You are appealing the lawsuit, and we will not allow you back on until at least the lawsuit is ended, if if at all. And it's just, um, they are allowed to do that, but it's definitely Apple just being insane about this. I saw, I saw a statistic that said um, Epic last year made $500 million off the Unreal Engine licensing, etc., and $9 billion off of Fortnite. And the mm -hmm. fact that Apple can just come in and just unilaterally say, nope, you're not allowed on our platform anymore and take away a giant audience for you. I believe it's like 35% of the mobile audience is iOS. Is, is, is it? crazy. Oh, I don't know. I, I, know, when, than that. I, know, I know when I well, they I'll first banned it, if you still had it downloaded, you could still play it. Do you know if that's still the case? I think that is still the case. Gotcha. But you can't do any purchases through that. So they're not making money mm -hmm. off that and they're not getting updates. Yeah, yeah. But as a player, other than being able to buy things, you can still play. Yeah. yeah. And the the iOS uh, mobile operating system worldwide share is 26%. Oh, that's a lot lower than I thought. Okay. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's gone down a lot in the past years. 72% people making the right decision there. Um, yeah, this is <laughs> I just want to bring this this is just crazy because it's it's another Epic v Apple uh, lawsuit drama and I think this is Apple's done some pretty nasty things as part of this, but I think this is definitely one where they had previously said, quote, we would welcome Epic's return to the App Store if they agree to play by the same rules as everyone else. And Epic has, they lost the lawsuit. And even though they were appealing, they were changing their app to not allow it. And Apple's just say, like, no. Yeah, I mean, listen, if if you sue someone who is a platform that you have a thing on, Guess what? Your your thing's not going on that platform yeah. anymore unless you get a court order saying they have to let you on. That's just how that works in real life. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's just funny that <laughs> Apple had literally promised to not do that at the start of the lawsuit. Well, <laughs> it's like To be fair, they were like, hey, if you play by the same rules everyone else does, you can. And then Epic's like, oh, okay, we'll get the rules changed then so that <laughs> we are playing by the rules. <laughs> and Apple's like, wait, no, that's not what we meant. <laughs> Wait, <Yeah>. stop. <laughs> it's just a very it's just a very stupid situation, but at the same time, it's very distressing. Number one, how popular Fortnite still is because it's basically a ripoff and continues to be a ripoff. Yeah. Um, in new and exciting ways, aka Among Us. But also that Apple just has such unilateral, basically monopolistic uh enforcement and that they're allowed to do that. It's uh games industry's messed up, y'all. Yep. <laughs> Uh yeah, I won't be playing Fortnite mm -hmm. again anytime soon. I'll tell you that much. Um, it's gonna challenge that monopoly decision on the lawsuit until it's in the Supreme Court. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Um, yeah. either of you, uh, big fans of David Cage? <laughs> no. Either of you, big fans of Star <laughs> Wars? Sort of. Not anymore. This is a match <laughs> made in heaven. <laughs> Quantic Dream is rumored um, to be working on a Star Wars okay, look, game. Can I? Yeah, I look. I I know everybody. Everybody likes to crap on David Cage right now and his games, but I I will just say, as somebody who played Detroit Become Human, because I think I rented it. I think I may have rented it or something for like five bucks. I I can't remember. Anyways, I had Detroit Become Human, and I played it not expecting much, and I finished that game. That game was like a solid seven, seven and a half. It's really not that bad. It definitely has some moments where it's like it's being a little bit too on the nose. But I, I do applaud the game design and game decisions that he is making instead of yeah. just another generic, you know, cinematic action. Listen, RPG. I, I don't have any problem with Quantic Dream games. I've never played any of them. I would like to someday. I'm kind of saving it for streaming, but I'm pretty sure David Cage is a proven <laughs> jerk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was going to um, say, I have no well, issues with the games that I haven't played as much as David Cage himself kind of sucks yeah well i will say i will say look i don't mean to defend him but 
Quantic Dream did just win a libel lawsuit against one of the newspapers that reported anti-David Cage stories. And libel lawsuits are very hard to prove in France. So some of those accusations against him are not true. Yeah. He could still be an awful person, but there's also a lot of yeah. yeah. Going around. I, I I've think seen that... some interesting stories on Detroit Become Human development too that I do not know <gasps> if they are very true. Like the big boobed robot. Yeah, the yeah. big boobed yeah. robot that got cut. See, I would have played um, the game if it came out with that. <laughs> Honestly, that would have been a really cool story. Because like, okay, well, look, I'm gonna do. I mean, do some, do, would it do have some been? Detroit? I'm gonna do some Detroit Beyond Human story spoilers here. Okay, ready? You know how there's like a little kid in the trailer, right? No, I, and, I didn't see the trailer. Yeah, isn't he dead funny. or something? He gets hit no, by a it's car. It's like a little girl. It's a little girl, and in one of the original trailers, they got a lot of shit because they showed like the, the dad being abusive towards the little girl. Like he doesn't hit her, but he's just like yeah. an awful father towards her. Doesn't happen. When you play the game, it makes sense because you find out that the dad and his wife they couldn't have kids so they got a kid robot and then the wife it didn't do enough so the wife left anyway so now this guy has this kid robot that he has to take care of that just constantly reminds him of his wife that left them and he's on like pills and it's like oh so it's still crappy his behavior but it's not child yeah. abuse or is it like it's actually a really interesting dilemma but people can't get past like how dare you show child abuse in in video games this is this is an aesthetic medium but there are topics you're not allowed to approach at all and it's just like come give the guy some credit he's not doing it perfectly it's a little clumsy but he is attempting something here other than making another stupid sony cinematic naughty dog third person action game that everybody's trying to copy nowadays you know i'm going crazy here but it's like the guy's not perfect, but he's at least doing something different. Granted, Anyways, you never Star played Wars. the cinematic bad games that you claim are horrible. I play bad. an hour or two of them, and, I, and then I stop because they're not yeah. any good. So yeah. that's it. Okay. Uh, I will say there, <laughs> Sir Reason Ian doesn't hit his toaster anymore. Um, moving on. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think... <laughs> Star up. Wars, like I, I, I so I for no, one, I'm curious about what they're gonna face. do with Star Wars. <laughs> I'm curious what they're gonna do with Star Wars because all the Star Wars games right now are just either rehashes of existing IPs, but not as good, a la Rogue Squadron, or they're just like weird experiments that don't quite pan out, like Jedi Fallen Order. I don't think was that good, or they're just generic uh, action games with Star Wars slapped on it, like Battlefront. Yeah, and I mean, so you can take one of to the see somebody do something different. You know, you could take one of the. Uh star wars shows ideas and kind of throw a sort of quantic dream twist on that like it's basically about finding the low because they're they're not huge action blockbusters so it's like finding that those human stories and kind of focusing it on that yeah, yeah. which i think is something that lucasfilm has been doing the the past year or two of releasing different star wars shows and stuff they're sure most of them still have action things but a lot of the reason the people go to the shows isn't because they're actually it's because they're telling like actual good stories now <laughs> yeah. uh, that have characters with development and everything so i think from that side I, I am interested to see what they do am i looking forward to this game no but i am interested to see what they end up no. doing but it, outside of someone directly like no one's ever told me to directly play a david cage quantic dream game but hearing that like if a game came out and it was like oh it's a star wars one i would probably be more apt without any recommendation to go and pick it up yeah. you know it'd be the same if they were like here's a lord of the rings one or something like that the biggest like that. surprise is that he was given the license <laughs> at this point yeah i wonder how yeah. that deal went like did he approach them or did sorry did the company approach them or did uh star yeah, like wars kind of go to him disney or disney approach yeah. Him, yeah honestly i i i like that that he ended up i mean we're assuming this is true i like that he's ended up with the license because it shows that star wars we know they're not in the ea exclusivity deal but it also shows that they're willing to take some risks and have some non-conventional games with the star wars ip yeah and so yeah, if, I don't... if it's true that quantum dream has that license or is being able to use that license, then I'm thinking, what other crazy studios or ideas are they willing to let happen as well? Did, did, have either of you seen the Visions show yet? Any of it? No, no I've been meaning to. come out? Yeah, it just like came yesterday, out yesterday, right? Um, okay. But I binged the crap out of that the other night. Okay. Oh, is it all the episodes at Good. once? Yeah. So it was nine oh. episodes. They're, most of them are like 10 to 15 minutes. A oh, couple yeah. are a little longer. Um, but... All of them are out. Everyone is done in a different style, following a different story. 
most of them are done by different animation studios and they do a lot of interesting things that i hope they were treating this as like a basically season of pilots for things Mm -hmm. uh and basically by by seeing what they did with star wars visions i'm excited to see if there is a game equivalent where they are letting people be a lot more explorative and trying things like his visions there's a bunch of weird things that don't fit the standard star wars universe that are very cool some of them are done better than others but very cool and i if they're being that lenient and letting people really have fun with the ip i hope that that extends to games did um I, I can't think of his name did the samurai jack clone wars guy do one no it was all anime it was all anime okay Japanese. cool yeah. i um in totally different styles but all anime. that uh clone wars show is on disney plus i think Bad i have the original here. dvds that oh the 2d one yeah it's 2d on one yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, that wait, show the 2d one is on it's there? incredible oh, that one's so good. it's so it's good, so good. Uh, I remember watching that when it first aired because it was the first time you got to see General Grievous uh, and a couple other characters. Uh, I can't remember. Um, that's exciting. I want to watch that. I've been I have been watching the What If stuff, which is good. Some episodes are way better than other episodes. Yeah. Um, I mean, and to be fair, that is true of Visions. Uh, there were a few, like two or three out of the nine, where I'm like, man, I do not want to watch an episode two of this. <laughs> and But I- in the other direction, there were two or three where I'm like, I want an entire series on yeah. what they're showing here. Like, this looks cool. That's awesome. I, I want to check that out now. Uh, moving on, I'm just going to go to the last one here, which was the Nintendo Direct today. Let me, uh, look, just give me two minutes. My motorsport Only, minute well, here. If you could I let need me, my motorsport minute. Well, do you wait a second <laughs> here. If you minute. wait a second here. I was saying, I I'm going to go straight to the last one here. It was Nintendo Direct. But before I do that, is there anything you guys really want to talk about? And then you would say... I need my motorsport minute. Here's Thank my motorsport you. minute. Look, there were actually Jesus. two pretty exciting video game motorsports announcements today. Uh, I'll start with the kind of tame one, which is NASCAR is coming to Discord. It's a little wonky, but basically NASCAR is starting their own official Discord channel. And uh, when you're in the channel during races, you'll get free in-car audio of all the playoff drivers, which is actually pretty cool. You get to hear audio uh, from the driver and their spotter and team radio and things like that. Um, there's a PRN, MRN radio broadcast, which I guess is just the descriptive. So no no video feed. It's just like literally the radio broadcast of the race. Um, and then just channels to hang out with other fans. I think it's kind of cool. You know, we talked earlier about how Microsoft may be purchasing Discord and it sounds like the Discord stepped away from that. They may be going public eventually. And, and the idea being Discord, fantastic platform, but how can they broaden outside of gaming? And I think this partnership is honestly pretty cool you know if you could just have a discord channel you're already used to discord or you're 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 at least aware of discord and you go wait i can hang out with a bunch of nascar people here on the official server and get access to stuff that's pretty neato the other half real quick just while we're on discord i think it's an update today or the other day uh that has like youtube watch along functionality as well which is also cool so discord making some very very good moves is the, is the NASCAR Discord chat an uh, oval? Keeps going around. It doesn't even make... It doesn't. Like an oval. You could say... You could say... It sounds cool, but I bet the conversation is very circular. No, but that's a circle. The track's an oval. Well... Uh, the tracks are different shapes to better... Poc- Poconos <laughs> is a... Poconos Not is a for NASCAR. Triangle, so... Yeah, they are, they are diff- Pocono's a triangle. Yeah. Also, they they do they do some road courses now. Real quick, I want to talk about I want to talk about this Nintendo NASCAR Direct. store. <laughs> no, real quick. So they started doing road courses, and the cars because they're supposed to be stock, they technically have windshield wipers on them, but they never use them. But the problem is the cars have like no, they have no, uh, they have they have no downforce when they're going through corners or not no downforce, but they don't have a lot of downforce, especially on non bank corners. So the drivers realized if they put their windshield wipers at 45 degrees, it gave them like the slightest amount of aerodynamic downforce when they went through turns. 
That's and so awesome. they so for like two races, the, all the drivers in, uh, for these road courses were just had their windshield wipers at 45 degrees for the whole race. It was hilarious. <laughs> Anyways, the other Motorsports Minute, folks, this is an insane announcement. I, I'm going to try and like explain why this is so crazy. iRacing has partnered officially with the Mercedes AMG Patronus F1 team to build and include multiple f1 cars including this season's mercedes f1 car and next season's brand new next gen completely different f1 car this is crazy because there is already an f1 video game it's already very popular it's pretty good people love it and um honestly i didn't even know they could make this kind of deal but they basically went to iRacing, which is uh arguably but also understandably the best motorsports simulator you can play right now not just in terms of how realistic it is with the cars and the physics and everything, but also their multiplayer mod uh, model makes it very competitive, but also very respectful. Like you're not going to find people crashing into each other because that will very quickly get you banned from the service. So to have this like world-class multiplayer racing simulator that is very realistic and very competitive, all of a sudden have a very realistic F1 car, not just from this year, but from next year as well, when the cars completely change because of the tech regulations, it's insane. People are going crazy because they have like an F1 knockoff car, which is like a fake car. But to be able to like sit in the F1 car and drive the real F1 car is I, I'm so excited. It's insane. It's just crazy. I'm, I'm very excited. Look forward to some more Formula Subpixel streams. They will be coming soon. Nintendo had a direct today <laughs> and Ian doesn't know anything about it. Ian, would you like to hear the cast of the Super Mario movie? Excuse me. What? Did they really? Did they really? This is animated, right? I can't right? believe you led with that. Oh, yeah, it's animated. It's the best part. Did they show anything? Did they, they show? No. They showed no. They only showed pictures of the actors and who they'd be playing. Who is it? Who is it? Do Rich? you want to know who is playing the wonderful Mario? Is well, can I ask? A I want to see first? if you can guess. Is Luigi John Leguizamo? No, no. Would you like uh, to know who Luigi is? Yes, Luigi is Charlie Day. <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> okay, okay. And Mario... that was literally one of two castings for this entire thing where I was like, okay, you know what? I'm in. I'm here for that one. I'm here is, for that is Mario one. okay? I'm, then my first guess is a non-guess in a way. Is Mario not the voice of Mario? It is. Uh, Charles Martinet is in the movie, but he is not Mario. Wow, that's interesting. Because, because uh, yeah, um, uh, Miyamoto actually uh, said all this. Uh, he said Mario talks a lot, which is why it's not Martinet. Oh. Which I think they're trying to separate this. Listen, I'm not going into this with bad intentions like everyone is but yeah. i think they're really trying to separate it from the the existing yeah. mario brand so um, yeah, yeah yeah it is not charles martin they better be <laughs> okay here's here's my honest guess this is my honest guess is mario ryan reynolds Oof, that's pretty not close a bad, not, a, not bad a bad guess, guess. No. who is it oh uh, you don't want to guess again no it's i think forever. you could get it um, I, I the only other one I was th I no I couldn't I it would take it would take a while okay. for me. It's Chris Pratt. <laughs> oh God, that that was one of the others. I was like, if See? I can remember that guy's name. God, I don't want that. Uh, he's gonna do an Italian accent the entire movie. I have a feeling he's not going I, to be doing an Italian. He's not accent. gonna do an Italian accent. I God, don't, I, damn I don't know. It. I don't know if you would get Princess Peach. Um, this movie's gonna suck. It's, Is it, it um? Is it? She's an actress who's pretty hot. Like, not. I mean, she's hot, but right she's now? hot right now. Is it Florence Pugh? I don't know who that is, but no. She's. Is, uh, she was in Black Widow, and she was in. Um, this. Oh, she was no, just. Remember. She was just cast as young uh, Furiosa. You know who? Oh. Oh. Um. Yeah. Uh, what's well, her name? Arya or something. Anya like Taylor Joy. Anya, oh, I think God. it is. Yeah, they're really swinging for the fences when they did not need to. Okay, well, and then it. and then there was Luigi was the next one. Yeah, Luigi was <laughs> the next one. Okay, okay I'm okay See? with that. Okay, Bowser. Bowser's good. I like Bowser. Ba Bowser is Idris Elba. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's, good that's really good. No, it's not. But that's it's really a, good. Um, it's Ron Perlman. 
No, no. you're you're in the wrong category. <laughs> okay, who is it? It's Jack Black. Oh, okay, that's good. But now that's I want Ron one. Perlman as Bowser. Um, mm. Toad, same hair, same haircut. <laughs> I love Toad. this one. Same hair. Is it? What's that guy's name? Bobby Kim, from Bobby. Bad TV. No. no, but that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Who is it? Keegan Michael Key. Oh, that's the other one where I was like, you know what? I'm here for this. Charlie Day okay and Keegan Michael this. Key were my two. I just they need to fire Chris Pratt immediately. That's not. Um, I don't I hate that. And so much. this last one as a little <laughs> hint: Donkey Kong smokes bananas now. He smokes. What do you mean he smokes like that, literally? No, not literally. But he'll probably no, end up lighting up some bananas. Oh, is it Michael K. Williams? Isn't he no. dead? He yes. did just die. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's oh, Seth is it Rogen. Vin Diesel? Oh. Oh, okay. This, I don't like the casting. I don't like I thought this was gonna be like 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 a medium effort, but like well done kids focused animated mario movie and now they're just swinging for the fences but getting all the wrong blockbuster actors i mean not all of them but half of them feel wrong i don't yeah. i don't know about this i don't know about this Dear mario like that's what i want i want like the like i don't know i want like the mario cutscene, but a full movie where they're like sort mario of talking like, his voice has never been good i yeah. you can cast whoever you want for that one <laughs> I want Mario to have like 10 words in the entire movie, but to be just a riveting. I character. want Mario to say the F you know? word <laughs> and mean it. Factorio? <laughs> oh. um, okay, let's move on to some, some of the other announcements here. Okay, um, that they blew me away. I was not expecting <laughs> that at all. They announced Bayonetta 3. Uh, well, it had been okay. announced, but they showed a trailer for it coming in 2022. Um, what actually pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, it looked pretty cool. Uh, I've never played a Bayonetta game. I should. Me either. It just looked interesting. But it looked interesting. Um, they also announced Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak, which is, according to them, a massive expansion for the original game. It'll wow. be coming in the summer of 2022. Uh, this next one, Voice of Cards, The Isle Dragon Roars. Um, this one looked super interesting. It's like a... Is, is this the one that's like hand-drawn kind no, of thing? No, it, it's an RPG, but all of the tiles you walk on are all... Everything are, is cards. Oh. So, like, you move your character on the cards, and, like, other characters are cards, and, like, the environment. But it's all flat, like, laid down, flipped over cards. That looks cool. Well, um, I'm glad you and Ian are excited about this. I saw this game and it was instantly like no this is not See, for me <laughs> i was at first too it's oh I, it, it says there's a free demo available today i just thought it i thought it was such a neat idea to, like show yeah. your game in that way um it could have other issues or anything i, I don't even think i'm gonna play it but it just like i just think off they're guard. rectangular shaped tiles instead of squares that's all <laughs> i'm sorry it's, i'm sorry true. guys I'm, I'm zoning out because i'm just picturing chris pratt going all right guys Time to save the princess. And it's just like, what oh, are you doing over there? Oh, the one thing the card game has. Yeah. Creative mind of Yoko Taro. That's the only thing that had me interested. Oh, I didn't realize oh. that. That's the near cool. guy, yeah. <laughs> near, far, sorry. Um, Disco Elysium Final Cut for uh, Switch. Uh, Chocobo Grand Prix. Is the game is that announced. a Final Fantasy racing game? It's a kart it racer. Yeah, literally looks like Mario Kart, but Wait, with a Final car F kart racer, kart. but with chocobos and no, Final Fantasy no. characters. Well, I mean, chocobo is a character, not yeah. the vehicle. Oh, the the chocobo character has. It's literally jet Mario skate? Kart with Final Fantasy characters. Yeah, it, that's all it is. <laughs> I can't wait to play it that. It genuinely that looked really stupid. good. <laughs> I thought it was Mario Kart and just <laughs> DLC. You know, honestly, look, I haven't played a lot of Final Fantasy games, but I know based on everything that the best parts of Final Fantasy games a lot of times are the mini games they come up with. So if they just do a non Final Fantasy like full two Final Fantasy mini game, yeah. <laughs> then. You Question know. Have either of you played more Final Fantasy 14? Oh, yeah. For a little bit. A little oh, okay. Bit. I, I uh, fell off recently just because I've been picking up so many of the new just games, curious. but like... Yeah. I haven't touched I've been... it since... I mean, I uninstalled it the other day, but I haven't touched it in a while. Shit. Hey, I never I paid for most, it. 
I got most of the way through the like dragon or not dragon's word, heaven's word uh, post game. Dragon's so I haven't quite gotten to Stormblood, but I'm I'm on my way there. Yeah. Um. Next, Kirby and the Forgotten Land. It is a 3D that was leaked, right? Uh, game. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was the one that was leaked this morning. Uh, I thought it I looked pretty the good. Game was wrong in the leak though, which was it, weird. It was translated from Japanese. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. Uh, it, it kind of just looked like an open world Kirby game in the sense of like the recent Mario and Breath of the Wild, but the graphics didn't look mm-hmm. super great. He's also, or she, I mean, he, it's... it, it is also in a post-apocalyptic world. Oh. Yep. So it's post-Smash Ultimate then. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> they did announce... Uh, I don't know if this is on the list, but they announced that there will they'll reveal this next Smash final Smash character October third, fifth. I oh, they're like, hey, is... the trailer's not quite done yet, so please tune in October fifth with Mister Sakurai. Does that mean... Yeah, does that mean there's a Smash Direct on on October fifth then? Yeah, yeah, it's a Mister so Sakurai. I presents. got it. So another Fire Emblem character. Got it. I, I have a feeling it's not a hype character. Is well, that's, that's how I the feel. The final now. character I want to be Master Hand. I think that would be cool. It's, it's not. It's not going to be, but I think that well, would honestly, be cool. Honestly, that wouldn't be super hype, so it could be Master yeah. Chief. That would honestly. Um, they announced the cloud version of Dying Light 2 will be coming to Switch. Uh, as well as Dying Light Platinum Edition, which isn't on. Oh, here, did but... they? Oh, yes, it yeah. is. No, it's. it's oh, in and the they, Switch, also, yeah. they also announced. There is more Animal Crossing DLC. It's the coffee shop. They're doing yes. another direct in October they, at some time. They didn't yeah. have a day. <laughs> they said we're, they announced they're doing an Animal Crossing direct, but they showed the roost in the museum, which is the coffee shop from the past games. Oh, gotcha. Which I was pretty pumped about that because I, w- I wouldn't mind checking in on my villagers. Um, Project Triangle has officially been named Triangle Strategy. Uh, and they showed Project some more stuff Tri- from that. It was Project Triangle Strategy working title, and now it's just Triangle Strategy. Oh, w- the strategy was worse. there. Um, <laughs> they said they added this, a bunch exactly of stuff. That's exactly what they did with Octopath. They yeah. said it was Project Octopath Traveler working yes. title, and then it was Octopath Traveler. Yes, but, you, but if you make a first-person shooter, you don't call it first-person shooter <laughs> game. You know, <laughs> Project First Person Shooter. You don't call it Pentagram. you hold gun, pull trigger game. I mean, know? listen, somebody, I think it was Sony at one point, made a massive action game and they named yeah. it a massive action game. Mag. That's true. That's true. Um, Should have added another A at the end of that. <laughs> oh, jeez. All right, uh, Florida man. And then my favorite <laughs> announcement that I called last week. They are adding Nintendo 64 games to okay, the Switch. Look, okay, okay, but look, I need you to temper some expectations here because the SNES and NES games they've added so far basically show they do not care at all about this. So tell me. They suck less. Would I'll you like that. me to tell you the games they are adding first? Well, first of all, let's go, let's go back a little bit. <laughs> the controller. Is that, is the, is, the, the, controller the controller is also happening. It's, it's wireless? 50 bucks. Wireless, wireless controller for 50 oh bucks. My God, I need that. So um, bad. Just to jump in on this while we're here, they are also adding Sega Genesis games. <laughs> and there's a Sega Genesis wireless controller, controller. for 50 bucks too. <laughs> what? That's wonky. Also, in order to get it, you need the Nintendo Switch Online Plus expansion pack. Which, which they have not announced pricing for yet. <laughs> Details so and pricing will that. be revealed at some point in October. Yes. But in another know, direct. Fair, I'm okay fair, with that. Three right. more of which will be It's October. already super cheap anyways. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's I like mean, $2. it depends how much it is. But yeah. so, so if I have to pay $10 a month to get NES, NES, and some decent N64 games and have the opportunity to purchase an N64 controllers, uh, 10 15 bucks a month, yeah, I do that. I do that for the months that I would be using it, yeah. Unless it's a mandatory year subscription, and then it's not. But they they do with Nintendo Switch Online, I believe, is a mandatory year. No, I don't think it is. No, uh, you, be, you can be I month could be totally month. wrong. But you can be month. I'll look it up real quick. But yeah, so what what games the are family plan with? might be a year minimum. Right, I'm trying to skip in this video so we can. Uh... Um. So they announced at the start, uh, Super Mario sixty four. 
Mario Wild. Kart 64. That's weird. That is so weird because they just came out with yes. this. Yes. Yes. Very <laughs> wild. You're, you're right. The family membership is 12 months min. The individual membership is month to month, $4 a month. Or 12 months for 20. Yep. Like, no. So Super Mario 64. Okay. Mario Kart 64. Weird. Oh, okay. God um, bless you, sir. The Legend of Zelda oh. Ocarina of Time, which okay, I'm looking good. forward to. Star Better. Fox 64. I don't give a shit. Did they did they say what about what about Majora's Mask? Yoshi's later story. Le, they did they say they say Wait, later date. No, I'm yes. reading the list. Yoshi's story. Spoil the list for you. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Wait. 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 Uh, Ocarina of Time. Yoshi's story. Win back. Never it's, heard it's of a shooter. it. It's a shooter. It's a shooter. Yeah. Um, okay. Mario Cult tennis. Oh, yeah. 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 Yes. Mario Tennis. Uh, yes. Dr. Mario 64. Never played it, but uh, I'm okay. I can and oh, Sin and Punishment. I don't know what that, that one is. That sounds. It looked like a third person shooter, but I don't know. Yes. Anymore. And then at a later date, they will be adding Majora's Mask. Yes. F Zero. Ooh. Um, Mario Golf, Pokemon Snap, and sorry, I'm waiting for this thing. Kirby's the Crystal Shards, Paper Mario, Roll Faster, and Banjo Kazooie is what they showed on the. Wow, thing. that is that's a solid lineup. Honestly, most of those games I can play other places, but I think I will now finally play them now that's on the Switch. Yeah, yeah, and I've been I've been wanting to play Majora's Mask, and my basically my best option right now is to get the 3DS version. But as I recently rediscovered, the 3DS sucks because when you close it, it pauses, but it's still running the battery down, and after like 24 hours, it just flat out dies and kills what you yeah. what pause by closing the, the screen. So Majora's Mask on the Switch, I'm 100 percent there. I want to play that game. I'm ready to play it. Yeah, I um I played both on N64 and then I played both when they were re-released for the 3DS. The one thing the 3DS version does over the originals is adds like quest, not quest tracking, but like a journal so you know what to do. Um, but That's I'll definitely <laughs> replay them again use, uh, after that. Use a walkthrough. <clears throat> uh, and then Sega Genesis games. This surprised me a lot. Castlevania Bloodlines, which I would like to oh, finally wow. play. Um, oh. which I think Bloodlines is already in the Castlevania uh, anniversary collection that is on the Switch, but this is separate. Um, Contra Hardcore, Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, Echo the Dolphin, Golden Axe, oh. Gunstar Heroes, Musha, Fantasy Gunstar Star Heroes. 4, uh, Ristar, Shining Force, Shinobi 3, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, Streets of Rage, and Strider. Cool. Cool. Yeah. That's, Exciting. that's pretty solid. I'm, uh, we talked yeah. about this, that we were not expecting this because they have treated Nintendo Switch online service so poorly. Yeah. I'm, I do not expect this to actually be a turnaround in the positive direction. But this is a step in the right direction. Just they will now a step back in some other way. Just let me buy ROMs and done. Yeah. <laughs> well, see for me, see for me, I I do prefer the subscription model, but I know they're not going to commit. Well, it's to just it. there's That's a the bunch thing. of other games that I would like to play that aren't in that. Yeah. So it's like true. just was... make them peaceful <clears throat> so I can buy them. I don't I was, even yeah, care. Just... They can have bugs. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> just let me yeah. buy it. The um the the N sixty four games they showed surprised me because like Pokemon Snap and stuff made me think like oh they tend not to do like the re like with the NES and SNES games yeah. they tended not to do anything outside of their big stuff and then it was all weird things so like some of those surprised me but it'll Mario be interesting to see and Pokemon Snap surprised me because they just released <clears throat> Mario sixty four yeah. yes. and I bought it. they just released a new Pokemon. <laughs> and these are these are bangers yeah. you know mario yeah. tennis mario kart mario 64 ocarina of time a george mask these are the bangers from the but console, i wonder they did not do with this i wonder if this was know? gonna come out back in march when they were gonna cancel when they were gonna stop selling the mario collection i doubt it you know i doubt it because that would burn people more than waiting six months plus plus yeah, we they would have done the, they would have done the controller earlier the fcc id and just held yeah. it back yeah it was weird because the, the FCC thing moved, so people thought they weren't going to announce it today, and then they did. Um, uh, f also, they announced the Castlevania Advance Collection, which is all the Game Boy Advance Castlevania games. Uh, 
area of sorrow harmony of dissonance and circle the moon and dracula x which i think i will buy that to play all those games uh and then they showed off a bunch of the splatoon 3 stuff uh it looked like they were mostly showing off the i what i assume is the single player mode it might have co-op or what something it, what did it what did it look like what are they doing different uh um Looked like a whole city you were in, and then they were like, oh. they were trying to like mammals were coming back, so you were they were trying to figure out why they were coming back. And, for the single player oh, stuff, yeah. And so for the for the multiplayer, so Ian, they had they literally had a crab mech, which was cool. Uh, and they had some new like superpowers where people were like zinging across the map with like a grappling hook type thing, but two paint splotches yes. and stuff. So they had some interest. I literally never played splatoon so i think this stuff was new but it looked they're amazing it looked pretty cool not gonna lie they're amazing games i can't wait to play splatoon 3. and that was it that was the direct they ended with the bayonetta thing solid. yeah yeah, uh, yeah, which, yeah it was pretty solid gotcha. i'm i'm buying that n64 controller so 100 percent. it's already already money out of the wallet folks <laughs> go for it <laughs> you know you honestly i really like this format where if we know there's a big press release press conference coming then one of us doesn't watch it and then we kind of just do the i like that because the, the genuine reactions i was not playing that up there were some surprising things in there good and bad and most and most nintendo good. stuff is thursday charlie so. day is luigi <laughs> charlie day Chris Pratt. <laughs> he was so excited <laughs> um okay let me play the music and let's get the heck out of here it's hot in this i room. do have one last breaking piece of news folks oh. <sighs> breaking i did it i refunded death loop they accepted it Hey. Oh, I don't have to play that game anymore. I think I'm. I think I'm. I'm definitely gonna. It's great. I've got these funds in my account now. I'm just gonna do. You know, Battlefield 2042. I got plenty of opportunities now. I don't have to play that game anymore. I'm happy you got your money back, but I'm also sad because I think you would have liked it. In a yeah, I think you would have too. Because I did not. I almost stopped playing it after the I think I, intro. I think I'm slowly realizing that I don't like any arcane games, and half of it's me. Yeah, you know, I, I did. There's something I, about them that just don't stick with me. I liked Dishonored one. I didn't like two, and I liked Prey. So I think I only played Dishonored one, and it was fun. Yeah. Um, folks, thank you for watching. This has been Local Chat. Joining me today was Ian Gibson and David. Uh, we will be back next week with delicious news and tidbits. So definitely come back for that this Saturday. I'm not sure what we're doing. Oh, Ian's got a surprise thing. So that'll be fun. Surprise. Is it 9 p.m. Eastern? Ooh. 9 p.m. Eastern on Saturday. Yeah, I'll be drunk. Folks, definitely tune in for that. Uh, if you want to see any of our stuff, subpixelfilms.com, bring you straight to our YouTube channel. I'm Will Crosby. You can find me on Twitter at Hunt270. You can find Ian on Twitter at Think Gibson, and you can find David's stuff at Save Data Team on all the delicious, delicious social media channels. Gentlemen, you thank me, you. You didn't tell me there was a very serious mode shot of Chris Pratt. It just says Chris Pratt Oreo. <laughs> That's right, folks. Chris Pratt is Mario, and we'll see you next week.